Welcome back to New Rockstars. I'm Eric Voss here with Ms. Marvel, Kamala Khan herself, Iman Vellani, to talk about the Marvels, the MCU, X-Men, and whether Kevin Feige has confiscated your MCU notebook yet. Welcome back to the channel, Iman. Ah, oh, never gets old, that intro. And no, he hasn't confiscated the notebook. <laughs> you carry it with you everywhere. I love that. <laughs> you know, there's like like literally three pages left. I'm, I'm <gasps> writing so small because I don't... My The worst thing is like starting a new notebook i think this is volume two maybe mm -hmm. um but two. it's terrifying you just i i like it when it rips i like it when it gets old and i gotta fix it with stickers and oh you fix it with stickers that's brilliant we got we got like iron man holding everything together but it's like really <laughs> just falling apart yeah that's amazing um i gotta say our interview back in july 2022 is one of my all-time favorite new rock stars videos we've ever made and so me and my theories as you indicated what happened did not come to pass uh but we yeah. said we would do a part two after the marvels came out and here we are thank you so much for coming back to do this Thank you for having me. I was so excited when I saw your name on the list of all of my like interviews. It's just refreshing. And <laughs> and this is all the last one of the day. So okay. perfect cherry on top. All right, awesome. Thank you to Boxu for sponsoring this video. More on their tasty offerings later. Uh, so I got to congratulate you in every review and reaction I have seen. Everyone is now seeing the light of how you and the way that you were playing Kamala Khan has just been one of the godsends in the MCU in recent years. And I think, you know, this is a time, Iman, that critics would probably be reluctant to share praise, but no one can deny it. You've, like, also been on the fan side of everything. I think you understand how much pressure there is to deliver, and I'm just floored at how well you're pulling it off. And I just uh, want to thank you for bringing Kamala Khan home for so many Marvel fans. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like trembling a little bit um that that's very sweet it's it is a lot of pressure only when i think about it but honestly i've i've learned that if if i'm like having fun it, it'll show and and i think people will have fun watching fun i think honestly fun is like the key word here and i've been using it so much during all of press <laughs> but the movie is genuinely fun and i think yes. people will be surprised at how much fun they're actually having i think sometimes you forget that movies are meant to be a good time you know yes. a couple fun hours of escapism why not a hundred percent and like i think we this movie reminds audiences i think we need to do a better job reminding audiences that it is okay to have fun and to lose yourself in the moment when you're watching these movies and i think you embody that so well and specifically let's start at the end of the movie spoiler warning to anyone who's not seen models <laughs> yet why would you click on this video but spoiler warning final scene come on con recruits kate bishop to it seems like a future lineup maybe the young avengers and i think this was so perfect because you are clearly reenacting samuel L. jackson's uh iron man post credit scene and i would say this is just me but i think not since robert downey jr have we seen an actor just relax and have fun in the role because often when you watch mcu movies the actor despite their talent seems a little bit terrified but it seems like you iman get that this is a rock concert you you do have to focus up and get serious sometimes but for the rest Enjoy the ride. Is that how it feels? You know what? You and everyone's yeah, everyone's letting me have a good time. I think the worst thing you could do to someone is like put a damper on their excitement. And I'm just so everything's so cool. You know, we we shot on on the volume for a lot of it, so the tech just leveled up. I'm working with Sam Jackson, like shooting Young Avengers, getting the honors to repeat Sam's lines. It's cool, like objectively cool. Why can't I be excited? And obviously like they're like, a lot of the times they don't even let me see um, some of the stuff that we're doing in rehearsal. They're just like, whatever your reaction is gonna be, just just channel that. Like for um, <laughs> the jump points, like when we're in the spaceship. So all that, the jump points that we're seeing, it was real. Like we, we it was the volume and they had animated the real thing cool. and they didn't let me watch it. And then we, we shot it and I'm like sitting on this like already cool spaceship set. And then they start playing the jump point and literally you feel like you are in space. It is, you are in the MCU space. Uh -huh. It was just cool on like so many levels. And I think the reaction that's in the film is like one of the first takes that we did. It's just, it never gets old. Yeah, it, it yeah. seems very authentic. And and you did say in another interview that originally the scene with Kate Bishop was scripted to have Kamala meeting someone else. Was it the other person, the daughter that Kamala hints at or someone else? someone else's plural there is a few <gasps> people um oh. but i you know what i like this version better because i want to see kamala 
collect her infinity stones. I mm. want her I, like my favorite part in Avengers, like the first film is Nick Fury going to Steve Rogers and Black Widow going to Hulk and everyone like just gathering the group together. Yeah. And then the band's all on, on the helicarrier and they're meeting for the first time and they're fighting and they're like learning how to work together. I want to see that all happen. So I think it wouldn't make sense if and, and they knew that, too, when they wrote. It. I think it was just like a placeholder scene anyway, mm. um, that if the all the younger Avengers were already together, like it, it wouldn't make sense. And I think you're missing out on such like a fun piece of content that we could have had, you know? Yeah. I mean, that assembly is just core to all this, right? Like it's yeah. almost like a stretched out version of the get the gang together. I'm in, you know, like you need to take <laughs> your time with that. I agree. I no, agree. exactly. Exactly. Milk it as long as you can until we're all like 30. <laughs> so I'm curious just as, you know, obviously you're a fan of the Young Avengers comics. Uh, what kind of MCU conflict or crisis would you want to see the Young Avengers tackle? I'm going to go back to champ. I actually don't read Young Avengers. I read Champions more. Okay. okay. Um, and Thank you for being honest. You would say that to any other MCU actor, they'd be like, yes, I've read all of those comics. My assistant has briefed yeah. me. To people who haven't read the comics, I say I read everything. <laughs> they don't know any better. Yeah. Um, okay, so the champions, yeah. Champions yes. is uh, maybe a better group than Young Avengers. Uh, that I, might be thank controversial. You, thank you. Yeah. I, I thought it was a hot take, but it's not. I, I, I think most people Their agree. chemistry is so much better. Yeah. They feel like actual teenagers. Uh -huh. The way like she interacts with, with Sam Alexander and Miles Morales. Like, it's my favorite trio, and I want it to happen so badly. Um, but I think in one of the recent uh, Champions runs, it's called Outlawed, and Kamala, like, dies almost or something, and a big explosion happens, and they create this thing called Kamala's Law, and Dum Dum Dugan's, like, after her and after all these, like, kid superheroes. It's so bizarre, but um, I, I, I like the idea of that, of, like, oh, maybe children should not be superheroes and yep. maybe they shouldn't be fighting, but they do bring a whole different perspective. I think one of the first, like, that the champions have been fighting like social justice issues for for so long and and they're so right on so many levels and they see things in a way adults kind of don't mm -hmm. um so obviously i'm i'm for it but i think that would be a fun thing to play with because there's so many young people that are being introduced in the mcu and in the comics and yeah it would be it would be fun i don't think they'll get dum dum dugan but yeah we can help they'd have to jump through a couple hoops to figure that one out but um, he's a variant. He, yeah, he's a variant from he's, he's he's a squirrel the whole time since Civil War. <laughs> okay, so little detail I spotted. I don't know if it was just like an animator detail. Kamala in her notebook early in the movie writes that she hates spiders. You mentioned Miles Morales. <laughs> was that intentional? Is that a possible nod to a meetup? I All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Loud and I, clear. They they just I mean they they you know they they put Easter eggs sure. for such random things. Whatever yeah. they can come up with. And if no one flags it, it's in the film. <laughs> Just to drive people like me crazy, I'm sure. I Oh, yeah, I'm sure. All right. Uh, we got to talk about X-Men. You were technically the MCU's first declared mutant. You are baptized with Ron Wasserman's X-Men. Um, so let's talk about Beast in this movie. Uh, we put our spoiler warning oh at the top. Um, you said you didn't know what this cameo was going to be until you saw a cut of the movie. Uh, yeah. But... Can I ask you as a, you know, as just a fan of it, might not know fully what Marvel's plan is, what X-Men universe do you think they are in here? Like, what universe <sighs> does this take place in? The, the first three films, I guess. Yeah. Right? Like, Kelsey Grammer, that only makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they did have, is it 838? They did have, like, old Charles Xavier in that one, but he didn't have his, like, yellow wheelchair in the films. Right. So, it yeah. could be a different universe. But also, maybe he just got the wheelchair later. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, any X Men universe is fine. That's not true. I was going to say any X Men universe is fine with me, but I still refuse to watch Dark Phoenix. <laughs> um, hey, you know, who knows? It can all be canon now. Kevin Feige has said it was who, doesn't matter who directed it, it could all end up being in the. In the melting pot. And if Kevin Feige says it, it is true. so. Kelsey Grammer as the beast is, is just such a specific pull. Like they could have pulled. I know. Patrick Stewart back or Marsden back in, but they're like, no, no, no. We want you to think about. Days and of they Future were Past. flexing on us yeah. with that CG. I was oh, very shit. impressed when I saw the little teeth. Uh huh. The yeah. Um, which I, it feels like they use some of the technology that they use on Ruffalo for Hulk, you know, but they they did yeah. it specifically to get like. 
a conic accurate beast, you know? Just out of curiosity, Beast mentioned Charles Xavier. Who do you think would be Charles in this reality? Would it be Stuart or McAvoy? Stuart seems I, to make I, more I, sense. Stuart, I think Stuart makes sense. Yeah. Given Beast's age and he's already in beastie mode, you know? Yeah. I, I think Stuart. So hopefully Ian McKellen's somewhere in there too. Right, right. And oh, then Halle Berry God. pops up. I think yeah. it'd be a jump scare if we get Anna Paquin too. But we'll see. <laughs> jump scare. Now we got to talk about this Marvel comic you're currently writing yourself, Ms. Marvel: The New Mutant. As a yeah. mutant, Ms. Marvel is now canonically a mutant in the pages of the comics. Now, how important is it for you to redefine Kamala Khan this way? And what has this process been like for you? I genuinely thought they were going to humor me with like a cute little one shot. I didn't expect they they were like. They kept throwing around, oh, she's dying and she's coming back as a mutant and that's the storyline you're going to be given. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, I've never written anything ever except like English essays. And they were like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Just like the stories matter. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then I like had my first pitch and and I, I had all these ideas. I was like, I'm going to age Kamala up. She's going to college. They're like, that's great. We're not doing that. She's 16 forever. But no, it's been amazing. And also like the fact that it matters so much I've seen so much discourse online and I know it's like people have their opinions but I love to see it because I haven't I didn't realize that she's an important enough character for people to care so much about a change like this you know it, to see the community come together and collectively agree on something it's it's just even if it's like a negative thing but it's still wonderful to see them coming together and i i miss that I, I i love like you know 2019 the the fandom was just amazing like people were going crazy over every single detail that was posted by the end game directors or anything and just any taste of that and anything to do with me like the fact that people are talking about my comic as you know as if it's such a big deal is honestly such an honor and and i love seeing all the discourse it's amazing I have to compliment you on your attitude about this, Simon. Because if you had asked me about this, I'd be like, the internet is a hellhole. <laughs> so yeah, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, these are superheroes. They're not real. <laughs> this <is> like... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. 100%. It's, it, I, I get it. I People are very possessive and protective over these characters. But it all comes out of a place of love and passion and, right. and the reason I think like this is because if I wasn't in the position that I'm in, I would also probably be on those <laughs> You'd be forums one of them. Yeah. saying like angry typing <laughs> and, and just like, you know, saying the worst things. But so so I get it. And I and I realized, you know, the internet doesn't have all the information. They don't know where they're right. going. They don't know the future. Um, so I, I'll just enjoy it while I can. Um, Which is great. And, and hopefully, yeah. It, and honestly, like, I have to say thank you to you. Like, I don't think I got to properly say this last time. But seriously, you you have, like, fueled the passion of, of so many fans, myself included. You know, so – and you're, like, so constructive with with the, with the your content and, and you keep everything positive. So it's just it's, – it's very refreshing. Like, you can, you can tell a lot by a fan with which YouTuber they go to first after a Marvel film. And anyone who says New Rockstars, I literally met a guy at Seth Meyers just the other night. He was like one of the producers. And he's like, I just watched your film. I was like watching the breakdown of New Rockstars. And I was like, you watch New Rockstars? That's crazy. This is like a 60 year old man. <laughs> um, so just know, keep it up. Like people people love the content and, and it your comment sections alone are just amazing. That's very, very kind of you to say, Iman. And, and I, we really do try here. We take our cues from uh, people like you, honestly, and having just very wholesome, positive outlook toward it. And yeah, and just having the grace to understand that sometimes people don't have all the information. And that includes having the grace to forgive um, like studios for still trying to figure it out, you know, or yeah. everyone who worked on the Marvels is like so talented, you know, and like there's so many great artists and uh, musicians and actors and VFX artists and, you know, Nia da Costa, like all these people are just like amazing. And there's, it's a celebration that this movie came out. You know? Exactly. It's, and it, like, just, I'm sure you breaking down the films and like me working on it, it's humanized Marvel so much more for me. Like they're not just like these spontaneous films that just exist randomly in the theaters. Like they take years to make and years to develop. And everyone who works on these movies are, they genuinely love their job. Like, sure, there's hard days, and Nia probably wanted to rip people's heads off at some <laughs> point, but she never showed it, and she was always positive. And anytime I wanted to talk about comics, anytime I wanted to talk about my characters, she was always there and attentive, and I just 
got that energy from everyone. So yeah. people care and, and they're making the films and all these shows for nerds. So something to consider. That's, you that's know? yeah. Thank you for saying all that. Um, I saw that you talked to Seth Meyers and you mentioned as part of your research that you were looking at the 90s X-Men animated series, that you were reading yeah. Jonathan Hickman's new X-Men. Uh, and you had also cited, last time we talked, Jonathan Hickman's Time Runs Out storyline is your favorite or one of your oh, yeah. favorites leading to Secret Wars. And then, Iman, weeks after you and I chatted, Kevin Feige went up on stage at Comic-Con and announced the Secret Wars film. Seems yeah. like. Isn't that crazy? It's, it's insane. It's almost like you knew something. Maybe not. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, seems like they're adapting Hickman's storyline, at least from an outsider's point of view. I assume you're siloed out of some of those conversations. But hypothetically, you know, looking at things happening right now, if the, you know, if the studio were to establish the MCU's take on Kang as the equivalent of Molecule Man from that storyline. That's what I was trying to tell everyone. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this is we're having okay. a real interview right now. This is not okay, okay, wait, wait. We're just nerding out. Okay, on you finish your thought and then and then I'll I'll tell okay. you what like my theories are because I'm I genuinely am not privy to any of these conversations. Okay. Great. So we can just so. we could just uh nerd out on this. I love it. Okay. Okay, great. Kang equals Molecule Man, at least in the way structurally that story works. I, I agree. I agree. He is like the, the, the doomsday device of all these different realities. Yes. And then God Emperor Doom comes in to pick up the pieces and build Battle World out of the void. That's what I'm. That's what I want to see happen. But I'm. I'm not in control of this franchise. What version of this are you most excited to see as a comic reader and as a fan? Okay. Okay. So my my theories because it's like, okay, the time runs out and like Secret Wars. It's a lot of characters and a lot of storylines, and I had to reread it twice myself. Like, yeah, it's crazy. just to understand the basis of it. So translating that into film would be near impossible, I think, without yeah. it being super clunky. And, and then you have so many new characters and a lot of the new characters that are being introduced, they don't exactly exist in the comics or, or they're different versions of them. So I think it would make sense for, yes, Kang to be a version of the Molecule Man where he, you know, like Owen Reese existing in every single universe and there's different variants of him. Mm -hmm. We've already seen that. So that makes yep. sense. Yep. Check. But also, I feel like he could be he could be the Molecule Man and the Beyonder all at once. That actually makes a lot of like, sense because the Beyonder. What if has there the was intention. a Kang Prime, like or something that that had the ultimate power and and you know because because Molecule Man absorbs the Beyonder's powers and mm -hmm. gives mm -hmm. it to Doom and who gives it to Reed Richards, right? So if if you like cut out a couple middlemen and it's just Kang, and then maybe there's a different version of Kang that like is the main molecule man that's like helping maybe it's even like a victor timely type who's like kind of more innocent mm -hmm. and wants to help doom and he's the one who absorbs the other molecule men and the beyonders powers aka the big kang or they mm -hmm. kill all the kangs and they're they, they they meet their big boss and that's kang prime or something that's that's how i see it and okay. then the rest of the times that uh, thing can play out the same i think i love that we have to bookmark this because last time we were like speculating, I'm telling you, two weeks later, they came out and said Secret Wars was happening. So okay. when we start to Maybe we're manifesting details, something here. Right. We're, we're willing it into existence. We're dreamwalking into our alternate timeline selves to make this happen. Yeah, entanglement is a big component of what makes the Marvels fun. And you can keep that fun going by entangling, snacking, and surprise with Baksu. Baksu is a premium Japanese snack box that works with family businesses all over Japan to deliver a new theme of authentic Japanese snacks every month. And honestly, it makes a great gift. Fun snacks that you'd usually have to travel to try? People love it. And beyond the snacks, each Baksu comes with a booklet that teaches you all about the theme and where the snacks come from so that you can have a deeper appreciation for what it is you're munching on. The first box of any Baksu subscription is the Seasons of Japan. After that, you receive a new theme every month with curated seasonal snacks. One of my favorite things for these is a white strawberry. It's so sweet and the strawberry is infused with white chocolate to just make like, oh my God, it's heaven. It's a bite of heaven, I'm telling you. But they also have these smoky radish chips, which compared with the, the sweet white chocolate strawberry, this just makes for a nice smoky something something. Oh yeah. Ooh, so good, so good. Both I and the new Rockstar's office have been receiving these boxes for ages. We love them. So if you want to try Boxu and support the channel, click the link in the description and use code ROCKSTARS to get $15 off your order. One of the things when we last talked was about the, the bangles, which we now know are quantum bands, which is mm -hmm. a specific thing for Marvel Comics. Did naming them quantum bands, as far as you know, imply any other historical owners of these? 
like like Quasar and stuff. Yeah, maybe. I still think okay. I still think Eon's a contender. Like okay. I think he definitely right. forced him. I I I know you. Did you say? Did you have a theory about like was it still? Eon or my just explanation of like canonically Eon created them. I my theory is that they're not gonna make Eon, at least right now, a physical presence. I don't think they'll say Eon, but I I swear there was a version of our script where Darben actually name drops Eon, like this was his grave or something where they found it. So in my head, that still makes sense. Yeah. Um, but it it for me to link everything together and just condense some of these dimensions, I feel like the newer dimension would be the quantum zone, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like it's made out of energy. Why not? And yeah. and Najma also like mentions how um how her being called a jinn is like one of many names. Right. So I feel like her saying newer dimension is also like one of many names that we mm-hmm. don't know yet. Mm-hmm. So like quantum zone could totally be one of them. Um, but yeah, I don't know about the different wares. Uh, the the ten rings thing in our show. I don't know who that whose idea that was. Why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, there, I'm sure someone is smart and plotting something to do with Shang-Chi, but I, I genuinely have no idea. Yeah. We like in our breakdown, we were trying to figure out like, uh, do they it both takes too much brain nerd? power. You realize what they're doing to uh, you. Like they're just setting these things up and letting you do the work. No, don't tell me that. <laughs> Please don't let that be the I'm case. not. Uh, well, I think God, you're right. I shouldn't I say know. that. I like. The I mean, I, I, I might just not be a part of this conversation. <laughs> but I feel bad now. <laughs> no, no. I think there's probably some kind of linkage. Um, yeah, I would love to visit the Nord dimension. I mean, did you see the finale of Loki? By the way, I did. The fact yeah. that the Nord dimension had a big tree in it now just <clears> makes <throat> me fascinated for what kind of connection there could be. Right. I don't know. Not any tree. Any world. tree. Every tree. I realize that's the dumbest thing I think I've ever said. <laughs> any place there's a tree, uh, there's a It must be Loki. connected. I mean, yes, Loki is kind forest. of now atlas everything in the Marvel Universe, it sounds like. So technically, he's carrying all of us. But um, real quick, I want to talk about Aladna. And I love the sequence because if you look at you in every one of these scenes, you were just rocking out. And it's you're just Zemoing in the background of every <laughs> Aladna scene. Um, oh, was God. there more to this sequence? I don't want to see those memes. <laughs> it's going to be great. I want to ask, is there more to this sequence that we didn't see in the final cut of the movie? Yeah. I hope they release it on Blu-ray or something. Yeah. It was, we shot it for like, hot minute and it was we still shot it like at our back lot so we didn't do like any on location work except um that grassy planet where Mm. carol and monica like have and they all have that talk of like oh i'm sorry oh it's my fault hala is Uh dying that was the only like actual on-site thing that we did wow okay so i know you thought otherwise i thought it was volume shows what i know this is how you know i'm not a vfx artist. i get it i get it the like way it's framed can be a little misleading but uh, it was real uh right. like somewhere in the farmland of london <laughs> but um london. no aladdin was so fun because we were still like at the studio but just uh, on 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 the other end and all these extras were amazing dancers they had all this makeup on uh-huh. um i couldn't stop staring at people and they just came with all this energy that every single take we were doing it was like they were getting even more hyped i i could not believe it and and the song was so good our rehearsals for this were so fun um yeah so the song is like much it, it's a legitimate like three minute song okay. there's a moment where uh, i think carol starts singing there there's bits where kamala's singing like i i I was having so much fun. I'm such a musical and theater nerd. So I would I would love to see like this actually like imagine an Aladdin musical. Like forget Steve Rogers. This is <laughs> this is what I wanna see. Um yeah, it was it was very fun and the costumes were just insane. Honestly, I didn't realize how crazy it was until like people online started saying, This is like a weird movie and I was like, Yeah, but in the best way possible. Yeah, I thought it was really fun. I, I could have seen more of Aladna, honestly. I think it would have been fun. Little moment that I didn't even realize the first time I watched it. When Carol is floating with the quantum bands in space, Kamala's embiggened hand reaches out and scoops them. You're not wearing mm-hmm. the bangles there. So does that mean it's something with her mutant abilities that are allowing her to access that hard light? I don't think her powers come from the bangle at all. Right. Like, okay. I think she just wears them as an accessory now. <laughs> uh-huh. um, uh-huh. They, I think they just were the key and, and the doors kept open. So like she that. just now has all this access to the Noor. And her, her like the way I, I justified it is her mutant power is the ability to, to 
wield the noor and to shape it mm-hmm. like I, I keep going back to Kamran. he wasn't able to do that like his noor came out spiky and uh, uncontrolled mm-hmm. he wasn't a mutant kamala is and and it's a very specific power i guess like almost the technicality but that's that's my headcanon at least so yes she can use her powers without the bangle um and then the bangles i guess help her access more of it i love that approach of it I, it makes a lot of sense to me too and i, I have to ask about samuel l jackson uh, I love that story that you told us Seth Meyers about how he told you to retake it because the high five blocked your face. So he's just, he's like, yeah. elbow me. Um, I had read recently that Sam Jackson apparently hates to run. And I noticed there's a shot in the movie where he's just like sitting in a chair and he shoots somebody. What, yeah, what was it's it, great. What was it like shooting with Samuel L. Jackson? Is there any- he sits all the time. He sits all the time. He's always sitting. <laughs> and if there's no chairs, he'll find one. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, he's he's very, very patient. Well, not like patient with me. Uh-huh. He was he was very gentle and and I think knew how new I was and, and gave me space to play and try. And he's also very playful. And I think what was so impressive about him is how much he loves Nick Fury. Mm-hmm. He was the only person who came off of Secret Invasion and onto our film. So he was literally keeping continuity for his own character. Wow. Which, like, I, I honestly, like, I had the same experience. No one from Miss Marvel except the cons were on the movie. Uh-huh. So I got to my first day of stunt training and everyone's like, so what are your powers? What yeah. do you do? Yeah. Right. So it's it's tough because like we're the only ones who are really transitioning and, and it's a completely different crew. So he's very, very professional and very good about like, OK, this is what my character needs. I want to say that. Let's get to the next take. Like, he's very to the point. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I love that because he brings so much of that to Nick Fury anyway. Um, and I love how much more playful he was in this film. I think the cons and Kamala just like really bring it out. And, and the tone of the film is also so goofy that he was kind of leaning into it. I think he was so just let's have a good time. Yeah. Like, we're here f- with cats in space. And, and he's so good with the cat. So yeah. it, was, it was very cool watching him work. It felt like he was kind of back to form, um, which is just really fun yeah. to see from him. Um, OK, so circling back to the beginning, the MCU notebook, you're still using it. Kevin Feige hasn't taken it from you, and I read somewhere that you have not bothered Mr. Feige about 616 because you're holding out for Ms. Marvel Season 2. Do we have any update there? <laughs> that is the generalization of what I actually said in the interview, I think. Um, <laughs> okay. No, I mean, it's true. I'm not taking that seriously anymore. I, I, Because you know what? The fans. Every time I do an interview and they want to like bring up the 616 thing, everyone always starts with, by the way, I think you're right. And I'm like, that's validation enough Mm -hmm. for me. You know, I think maybe when Reed Richards sets the whole universe back to normal, maybe that could be one nine, 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 nine. Or, you know, I just, I I see it as a separate universe. I don't see it as like an adaptation of the comic. So it really depends, you know, perspectives, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And I think that's Kevin, a valid point Kevin of view. Wants to see it his way. I think it's 616 with an asterisk right now. And then once Reed Richards resets the universe, then it is a true 616. Once it has X-Men. But see how much like we're having to talk about yeah, it? And do you see how much we could have avoided this <laughs> if he just like allowed the fans yep. to keep the name? Yep. It was a simpler <laughs> time, Iman, when we had I, six I members agree. to identify the MCU. Now we just have three. Yep. All right, we'll leave it there. Uh, Iman, this has been amazing. Congratulations on uh, on Thank you so much. all the praise you're getting. Well-earned praise for the Marvels. And I think like this is going, the word of mouth on this movie is going to be great. I think I was just at a screening in San Francisco on Wednesday and everyone was feeling great afterwards. It was a like full theater, you know? And I'm like, it's a Wednesday See, night. That's all we can ask Everyone's for. There. Yeah, so. Just like have a good time. I do have a question for you though. Go for it. Um, okay. Can you still enjoy films and TV <laughs> without getting all analytical? Or or like what's the the thing you can watch without having to break it down in your head? Okay, yeah. So the answer to both parts of the question is the same. I watch garbage reality TV on like the what? weekends and at night. So it's not garbage. I think it's quality reality TV. The challenge, MTV's the challenge. And then I watch MTV. Wow. Well, we get it on like whatever uh, Paramount Plus, I think. It's one of these like, how do I even find this? It's like. That was so unexpected. You're like, (laughs) Escape Disney Plus, Netflix, Paramount Plus. I unplug and my, it's something my wife and I are able to bond over. So that, and then, um, and then like Great British Baking Show. Like I need something (gasps) that's just 
reality. My favorite show ever. It's 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 good wholesome content. I mean, are I'm, you up to date? Yes, I believe they're in the the quarterfinals now. Um, yeah, I like how they just had dessert week. And it's like, aren't all of these desserts? And it was all caramel. <laughs> it's all caramel, which is just mean. And like caramel pudding. I was like, people, why is this so difficult? Don't you think Paul designed the technical challenge to be way too hard? Like, if they all fail, then it's your fault, Paul Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, he's like, because people have been doing too well, I think, in this yeah. group. They're very good. They're all really he's good. Like, I was so gonna... sad to see Saku leave. I wanted her to take it all. I know. I'm rooting for Tasha this time. Tasha's great. She's really good. She had like a scary week where it's like, oh no, she's going to get cut. She's great. Yeah. Does Dan remind you of Michael Fassbender at all? (gasps) Please tell me yes. He does. He does seem a bit like Michael Fassbender. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. Is it it, like it's the smile? It's that smile. That's it. No, my, my, my brother didn't see it, but (laughs) I, I think he does look like it. This was great. This is great. This is the interview. So yeah, to answer your question, that's how I'm able to still like, uh, there's movies and then there's just kind of like whatever unplugged content. And then that kind of like, I need the balance because if it was just all like franchise nerddom content all the time, I think it it really would burn me out. I got to have like a mix. I in my diet. can imagine. I don't even understand how you're still going and with the energy that you're going with it's it's you are the remarkable. reason i'm still going iman you brought so much light back into the mcu and i'm telling you robert downey jr got it it felt like him getting booked on iron man was like hey these things they don't come to everybody these opportunities so i'm just gonna have fun with this and like if i had a note and not like anyone's gonna listen to my notes but for all actors in the mcu just have fun with this enjoy the ride and you seem to be doing that so i'm so proud of you and i'm so happy for you thank you so much that genuinely means a lot like coming from you i like remember the sam basher days and everything i was like oh, this is crazy this is so man. weird like you guys have such a large group of people now and the whole production yeah. like it's amazing Go us. Seriously. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. Uh, congrats. Enjoy the rest of your night and enjoy the rest of this ride. It's gonna Thank be you so much. Great.